This is the really up and coming. It used to be the industrial area, the beachfront, all the warehouses and fish packing plants, stuff like that. And so now it's all the really cool restaurants and little pop-up coffee shops. Artists live here. So you decided to come to this area because? Well, I've lived here for about 15 years now. So I grew up in the High Sierra. I love nature. Joanna loves the ocean. And so Santa Barbara was naturally a great pick. So our, our office is actually right there. You don't even have a storefront. I mean, it's very yeah. subtle. Yeah, we're not, op not open to the public. Yeah. Why is that? That's because we only make so many of these things. We're all about pushing innovation and coming up with new ideas and not about scaling product to sell a thousand of these things a year. That's, that's really not our, our model. So this is a living vehicle. One of the first things you'll see is that we have these two wings to either side that we call a, a dual solar awning. So the roof, it's like a drawer. You pull out a drawer but it's on a little actuator that pushes it out. And on top of that, it reveals another layer of solar. And so we have twice as much solar, but it's also an awning that covers, it shades your windows for heat gain. It's almost like an international space station. Exactly, right, where it extends, extends out, and then, yep, is folds that the out. Idea? Yeah, it it's is. It's so cool, it literally looks like a transformer. Yeah. We wanted to design something that was primarily built for full-time living. So this is the, we call this the Euro loft. It's just one of the adaptable sleeping spaces. <laughs> so you can come down as far as you want. You know, it, it comes down further. As far we, as you want, not as far as she wants. We won't have it, we won't have it go down anymore with Joanne under there. I can bring it back up a little bit. So yeah, say you wanted to be in multi-mode where you still have people down here enjoying, you know, the evening and then you have kids up here sleeping. You know, this idea of living in a trailer, in a Obviously, we did not invent that, right? People have been doing this for a very long time. But based on our experience, these spaces were not designed for that. Mm -hmm. And so what we For full-time living. Right, yes. for full-time living. And so right. what we've done is, right, taking the best of parts from every single industry that is outside of the RV industry. Because the RV industry has not changed much in about 80 years. We actually have the first jar of water we've ever created. Yeah, that's, oh. yeah, that's what this we is here. Everything. And this is the very first system that has been produced that creates water. This extracts water out of the air. This is the air intake. This would be installed on the outside wall of the trailer. Air comes in here, goes out there, and then there's a process that extracts water out of the air, just like an air conditioner. It's basically a glorified air conditioner, just much more efficient. The water gets then sent over to this multi-stage water treatment system. After that, it goes straight to a drinking water tap or it goes into the primary storage tank. Our goal is to live off-grid indefinitely using just the resources of our world. How much water can this produce? So this is the first system. This one can produce up to five gallons a day. What kind of panel would you need in order to produce five gallons a day? This could run off of two to 400 watts of solar. So, you know, we have these little deployable panels that you could just add one more panel and run this whole system. It's basically converting sunlight into water. I've really been influenced by Apple, the company. So you can see a lot of the Apple influence in the design. You know, the whole thing, the quality of the whole thing is built on the, the foundation of, the, it really is a foundation. It's a very strong foundation. All the hatches that we build, these are all custom. Automotive quality is our, is our goal. So all the connectors and wires and everything that goes into this is just something that lasts really long. Actually, one of our hallucinations is that we could build a product that would maintain its value. This is a, a freshwater hose. So for filling your water tanks, also for city water. A lot of RVs, because they're built so poorly, depreciate really quickly. We brought this from like higher end bus technology, these leveling pads. So this isn't just a stabilizer that's typically found on trailers, is that we actually level this system. So you press one button, it's a hydraulic leveling system. It's just ease of convenience if you're traveling more often, but also it's a, it's a foundation because this is going to be your house. And a lot of trailers that, that we were in, the little stabilizing pads, you still felt you like you were in a boat because the trailer was rocking back and forth. This whole thing was built from experience. So Joanne and I have been living in small spaces for the last decade. Check out our van. Our, our big our van. Motor home. I'm gonna just jack this up. This controls the stabilizers. Mind you, these are stabilizers, not levelers. We got stopped last night because there was a high wind advisory and no trucks were being let through on the freeway. So we decided to pull off and uh, camp here on BLM land and just want to share with you how cold it got last night. 
So come on out here and see what it did. It's currently 11 degrees outside. We decided to sleep here last night because we got so cold we closed the front door to the bedroom and we kind of had just all the heat inside this space because we didn't need to use the whole unit. Hey Joanna, how's your shower? That's great! It's what? getting hot! Seven years ago when we met we were living in, in a boat and we then lived in a trailer and we're like let's build something better. Here we are at the beautiful Santa Barbara Harbor and there it is first launch of tequila. Yeah. Everything we lived in was a compromise in one way or another. So we lived in a boat where I couldn't stand up and take a shower. We lived in a van where we, our toilet was only so big. And so every time we were living in what was fundamentally a recreational vehicle designed for a night, a weekend, maybe a week. Pack up, move on, go somewhere else. These are shells. There's not much in these yet. Um, I think this project just started. You know, in the last time we talked, we toured my previous business was the Airstream Renovation Company. This is going to be a, a king bed, I think. This is going to be for an Australian family of five. To live? To live. After designing over 400 spaces for customers and renovating them. So when we have something like a modern appliance, you know, we hide it inside of our, our teak wall. Also, living that life, we wanted to design something that was primarily built for full-time living no matter where we went, no matter what the temperature, and we wanted to be in nature. We are on the maiden voyage, towing our brand new living vehicle, and um, I'm actually quite surprised how well it's towing. And when Matthew was like, let's live in a trailer and let's do all of this, it's like, okay, here's about 40 things that need to change if that's going to be my lifestyle. We've done a ton of off-grid trips, including this one that we're on right now here in Colorado. You know, we do run all of our systems when we're off-grid, one of them being our dishwasher here. Here we've got our convection grill and microwave combo. We've got a nice ice maker. Our batteries here, the power comes in, is straight all the way back there. Right now it is a cloudy day and we're generating 1800 watts of solar. But, you know, again, it's just the two of us, but we like to eat, so. Anything that's plugged into the outlets, you can use anything on the energy system. And so it became the ultimate kind of challenge of designing a space that accommodated our needs. And having worked with so many customers doing Airstream customizations, we knew what a lot of people wanted. The exterior is aluminum. It's a anodized aluminum. So it's six times harder than just a, like a mill finish aluminum. Feels almost like Airstream inspired. <laughs> Very much so. You can see all the, all the experience that I had with Airstreams. We remodeled over 400 Airstreams. You know, what you've got on Airstreams is an aluminum skin on the outside, which you see, and then you have ribs about every two, two and a half feet. And so we took the technology, well, not just the technology, but it's built very different. You know, Airstreams, what's called a semi-monocoque construction. It's like an airplane, whereas this is, you know, it's basically a platform with a, a moment frame built on top of it. So it's fully welded and it's all thermally isolated. So it's a three inch wall. It's not a thin wall. It's designed for four seasons. RVs typically are not four season capable because their water tanks, their pipes, you'll freeze, just the design of them, they're not insulated. What we've done is we've created a, basically a shell. So it's a, a shell with rigid closed cell foam and that shell, everything is on the inside. So our heat pumps heating these? Exactly, the mini split. It's a heat pump and mini split AC, exactly. So it's a heat pump and so this is so efficient, the heat pump goes down to negative four degrees. So you can go down in sub-freezing temperatures completely off-grid. And so we, we can do that because we have the capacity of the heat pump. It's not just about adding more power, more power. It's about finding other systems so we draw less power from that pack so you can make it more efficient and extend time off-grid. So this is, this, is our, this is our energy system. So those are all of our batteries. 
Okay. So this is a 72 kilowatt hour energy pack. Uh, it's all it's all lithium phosphate. So they're a consumer grade battery pack, meaning it's not like something you get on a Tesla where you got to take it to their proprietary service center. If you need to replace a cell or a battery, you just pull in place. So we designed the entire platform off of readily available consumer parts, primarily from the marine industry. This unit has 18 kilowatts of power from the inverter circuit. So you can run every single piece of electronics in here. All the electricity is powered off grid in this unit. The solar starts at 4,400 watts up on the roof and there's another 1,600 watts of deployable solar. So you have a total of 6,000 watts of solar. And we've had this unit here for about two weeks and it's never once been plugged in. And the AC and heat has been on auto and it's been a strut right at 70 degrees ever since. So we have a lot of tech. You need a lot of power to run this stuff. These are two of the highest demand appliances too. Induction oven. Yep. Induction stove. It's an electric fridge. It's, it's running yeah. off solar. It's full size. It's 13 cubic feet. It's a home style fridge and it, it runs off of our energy system. If you're living in this thing full time, you're going to be cooking. Joanna's a chef and so she really influenced the kitchen design and so we needed a lot of place to put, you know, food. And so we have a full-size pull-out pantry, multiple shelves, and all the shelving is, is locked in place, but it's movable. And so there's you know, little hex nuts down there that you can just adjust the shelf. Um, you know, and everything locks in place. All of our drawers and doors have double locking points, 100% aluminum. They're just built like a rock. Was somebody else using this tech, like for some other? Yeah, so garage and shops. It's completely machine shop, constructed to the highest standards it's built for mobile use because every time you're traveling with this you're basically it's a 9.0 earthquake wherever you go all these little details which yeah. don't seem like a big deal but nobody else was doing them like something as simple as this right <laughs> if you have that at home that's just what you're used to so this is more economical and you save water in a dish washer rather than washing by hand you know in the most economical setting it uses just over a gallon of water for a whole load yeah, and so when we think about the water gen system that creates, you know, up to five gallons of water a day, you know, one of those gallons is going to washing your dishes. That's a yeah. very big contribution to the hundred gallons that you're already able to carry with you. The shower was another thing where I really needed a better solution for what most RVs had to offer. It was a space that you just didn't really want to spend a lot of time in. Yeah, because you see now that you have a skylight above your head. Yes. So you've got a hand. Sprayers, if you're off grid, this is kind of the most economical in terms of water savings. Wow. Our goal was just to have as much kind of light as possible, and what better to the first thing in the morning wake up and literally see birds chirping and blue skies. That's a compost toilet, so you're not wasting water flushing and anything like that. So the solids actually get collected in here and then the liquids go into the black tank so you're able to stay off grid for longer. This mirror is really cool. It's got lights around it and it also has an anti-fog mechanism oh. and then you turn it on and off. This area, this is the systems control panel. This shows the real-time power flow from solar panels. Right now there's over 2,000 watts of power coming in. We're using 500 watts running both ACs right now. The power bank is at 78%, so you can see the little blue dots show where the power is going to the inverters, making AC loads for line one and two, and then DC power using 56 watts. We have 12 volts and 24 volts inside here. And so all this also, you can, you can run from your phone. You can monitor and control your system, turn it on and off and see how it's going. So various controls, your water heater. This model water heater also saves water. It's a tankless water heater. It has a circulation line, so you can go to this setting here and you can run a circ pump. So to save water, so you're not waiting for your water to get hot, and it's a combined tankless water heater that actually does that, so pretty cool. So, you know, no, this is, a, this, is a, this is a king size bed. This is something that we were able to do by redesigning the bedroom and positioning it this way. You get full circulation on all sides and then a king size bed. Something fun to look at is the amount of storage we have in here, so. Oh. Wow. So, you know, give you an idea of how much space is in here. Are you going under? So, <laughs> he loves doing this. Yeah, so it's on gas struts. It just lifts up, you know. So, again, full-time living. You got a lot of stuff. So you can keep a bunch of winter clothes or whatever. whatever. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> just watch your head. When if you, you want you to kind of, yeah, cocoon or something. Uh, yeah, store things that aren't living down here. <laughs> 
kind of annoying to constantly lift that up and down even though it's not hard and when we were living in here i was like i always just want to grab a couple of things so we incorporated these drawers which open this side you can just access a bunch of stuff that you need to use every day without having to lift that yeah there you go. You can see how big it is. Six foot five guy crawling in the <laughs> in the hatch in the hatch under the bed. It's a good place to hide. Yeah. Sorry, Nico. Oh, yeah. We're, well, the closet the closet's door is also the entry door. So most of our equipment's in the floor. You know, stuff that you need to service access easily, like a water filter. This is just a water water heater. You know, we have a tankless water heater, which is amazing. It goes down to negative four degrees. If you are connected to a a utility, you know, you have your systems, you have water connection points, and then you have, you know, dump valves for when you need to change out water. On every other camper we've ever owned, the only way to get outside is through that entry door and then down the steps. And so this is our solution to where we need to create something to where we can have some kind of a deck. It's rated for 1,500 pounds, so we've, we've filled it up with people. We've had, you know, eight people on the deck before. Can you do some jump spots? I am. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Okay, that works. It doesn't even move. That's great. Pull this out with me? Yeah. So what are you giving up when you leave in this small? I didn't really give up anything. You know, by moving into a small space, I gained so much more. Because, you know, I would hardly ever see you. We rented this place that... We were very lucky and got a nice place for the pandemic and it was, you know, bigger than we needed, but I, I missed my wife because I never saw her. You know, we get a lot of stories from customers that have lived in these is that they have so much more interaction with their family and the connectivity that they that grows from this type of lifestyle. You guys lived in this full time, full not this time. One, and, yeah. and you were able to find parking. That wasn't well, so then that's the thing. So there's like in our jurisdiction, you know, in the South Coast, Central Coast, there's communities that are opening this up to where you can have this as an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. And so on a property to where you have a home, you have another trailer. You know, this is just basically a trailer. But what's nice about this is you don't need to connect anything. You just put it there and, and then you live. So the next, the next thing, you know, our vision is that, you know, completely net zero, completely off grid, which means uh, no need to dump water either. So where we're going is water reclamation, water recycling, evaporation. So maintaining everything within this vessel, that's, that's the goal, it's completely net zero.